My name is Lou Nettles. I am a master barber. I've been a barber, licensed barber since 1989. So yeah, I'm getting older. <laughs> so I knew that I wanted to be a barber, probably like a lot of you guys, at 12 years old. I had a guy that used to cut my hair. His name was Gerald Cox, and I used to go and sit in the broken barber chair on the end every Friday or Saturday and watch him cut everybody else's hair. And I saw how much money he was making too. That was a but um, I just something about it. I, I just really it just really called me. Um, he had a huge following. He, it would it would be a barbershop full of people, and everybody was waiting on him. Who are you waiting on, Gerald? Who are you waiting on, Gerald? Who are you waiting on, Gerald? And I wondered how in the world he did that, how he made himself put himself on that level. So I began to start trying out at home, like we all do, you know. And uh, I would cut right out of my mom's uh, little den area that she was closing in the carport and that was my barbershop and I sat I sat an office chair kind of like the bottom like that on some bricks and there's the barbershop. <laughs> so and that's the humble beginnings of, of me as a barber. So I've been in this business for quite some time. I actually left it left the business for a few years and went into video production. Bar barber and takes you a lot of places sometimes. But uh, in the last two years I came back to barbering because it was my first love honestly. So here I am now, and I want to give you guys today a overview of what I call the barber boot camp. You guys, it's designed for the cosmetologists, not per se for barbers. Although barbers do come to this class, it's designed with, with ladies, cosmetologists in particular, because a lot of times what I find when I go into schools and when I, when I go into salons for that matter, cosmetologists don't feel comfortable cutting with clippers. They will throw a hair cut off in a heartbeat. Can you cut my hair? Oh, I don't, maybe. They may want to, but there's a fear There's a fear factor there. This class is designed to kill that fear factor. This, this class is designed to make it simple and easy and give you uh, a, a full format that you can follow so that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to say no to that haircut. You can take it because the reality of it is there's going to be some slow days in this beauty shop that you're going to work in this Sunday. And what are you going to do in that time? Are you going to just sit around and look at the walls? Are you going to get out and market yourself, which is very important. I'll talk about that too. Or are you going to diversify your talents? Are you going to learn how to clipper cut so that you can do the guy that lives, you know, up the street or the guy who works across the, uh, right across the street from where your salon is, who really will sit down in your chair uh, and get his hair done? Because the truth, the quiet secret is men like ladies to cut their hair. A lot of men do. Uh, that's how you see the Fantastic Sam's and some of these places right now coming up is because it's most of the time it's lady stylists in there and they're cutting men's hair and they want their hair cut with clippers. Anybody see that out there? Yeah. Okay. So this deals with that. I'm going to show you how to, with your cosmetology license, you don't have to, you can cut hair with clippers. That's part of your curriculum. So why not get the money? Now you can't shave with a razor. But even that you don't need these days because when you have tools like, you know, the five star, you know, this is gonna shave just as close as that clipper will. So you can still get around that and make your money. We have a hands-on training class that's that's gonna take place also. That'll be two days and you'll need to bring a model each day for that particular class. Now, starting with the with the basic tools and implements that you're gonna need. We're gonna start with the clippers. Now, I would suggest any cosmetologist is going to need at least these two clippers right here. Okay? Now, you can go a whole lot more high-end. You can, you can definitely run up the price on some clippers. But these are the two basic tools that you're going to need to fade, to taper, to taper a woman's neckline out. It's a lot of stuff that you know ladies are getting now that you want to be able to do. You know, you're guys getting a little mohawk and stuff and little stuff on the side. You can do all of that with these two clippers. You have a wall. This is a designer, but they have them in wall senior. They have them in all different types of names. This is the wall super taper. Same, same tool, same type of motor. Um, it has, as you notice, it has an adjustable arm on the side. Now. When this is pushed forward, that's that's called closed. As simple as that. When you push when you push it forward, that's closed. When you pull it back, that's open. When you close it, that's 
what we call in the barbering business a three z a triple zero. Triple zero equals up to this same guard, which I'll go into a little later because it's a different clip. Uh, I'm just referencing. So if you were to put in a fade and you started with this, then you open it up, that would be putting your first line in. I'll show you when I work on this gentleman here. Uh, but you want the adjustment. Don't buy the one without the adjustment because you will be trapped and you will not be able to get that line out and you will do this until your arm falls out. Okay, so we, we don't want you doing it. And edge. Okay, now, these are for outlining the hairline. Now, the secret to this is this. You have to, you need at least two of them. Now, you've seen the little peanuts and stuff before, right? We have those. Okay. Now, these, they're kind of, uh, well, you know, if you got them, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they're not uh, a strong clipper per se, but they do have a particular place, especially when you're cutting na ladies' napes, neckline area, because they're not that sharp, and they won't cut the person. But that comes to the point that I'm making here. This one is very sharp. You don't want to be all back here with this if you don't know what you're doing because you'll, they'll walk out and they'll have a red line all the way around their head and try to figure out how that got there. Well, <laughs> this is it. Okay. So, but you need it sharper to make them very crisp in the front. That's a very important ingredient of any haircut. And guys, we wash cars a lot, so it's like washing a car and no armor all on the tires. This, this right here is what cleans this haircut up, is what makes it stand out, it gives you that pop that you're looking for. Kind of like a lady's eyebrows. You ever seen a lady when she first gets her eyebrows done and like, what did you do? It looks nice. Did you change your hair? They never even know what it is, but it's so, it's so simple and it's so, you know, it's, you don't pay attention to it. And that's how, that's how the uh, line is here. Okay, these two must have. Now, you were talking about freehanding a second ago. I was you're hustling over here. She was talking about freehanding, which we're going to do with this gentleman right here because he has, uh, a, this is called a taper afro. Okay, so freehanding is when we take, see these little frizzes up here? All that? When I cut, when I cut that with this, it's going to look like this is a magic wand because it's, gonna, it's not going to be any of that. And that's what's going to make this haircut shine so much is because when he walks out, I love the effect of an afro because when you cut them and you do it right, they're round and when they get out, somebody's like, how did, how did they get it so round? That's my, I love that. That's, that, that, that. That makes me feel good. Now, this particular one, though, this is a master andis. It also has the adjustable on the side. Some people fade with this clipper. You can. I don't. I have a surgical blade on this clipper, which you, if you can see this, it is flat. Now, the difference in this blade and the other blade is it cuts very fine. Now, you know how close this gets? Think about this with a big motor because it cuts this fine, but it cuts this fine over here. And I mean, that when I see, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It cuts very fine and it's perfect for doing the freehand. It's perfect for what I call finishing on a haircut. Sometimes you see somebody get out of the chair and they still have the little, you know, everything sticking up and all this kind of stuff. They're faded, they're tapered, but you still see all of the frizzies and all of that stuff. I don't like that. I, that's not a finished haircut to me. And when they walk out, I want them to feel like they're a star. Because they are a star if they sit in my chair. So I want them to walk out feeling good. And my business is generated generally because somebody's going to compliment you on this haircut when you leave my shop. Period. If they don't do that, then I didn't do my job. That's who. That's how I end up getting the business that I do. Who did you? Who, who cut you? Who cut your hair? Oh, here's the scar. And then, they, then that's how I flow it to to me. Okay. Now this is a wall, a wall rapid fire. Now this clipper is really not even sold anymore. I used to work for Wall Clipper Company back in the day at hair shows and stuff like this. This was a prototype when I when I started this. Now. This would be the equivalent to an Oster. Anybody know what the Oster clipper yep. is? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the equivalent to the Oster, but it's a little bit, to me, it's a little bit, it's, it's a better clipper. Because with this clipper, you can dial it up. You can turn it down. You can, but this level of speed and power doesn't come from the Oster clipper. And sometimes if you cut it through some very thick hair, it might not make it through. This, this is a 
We're talking about Barber Boot Camp. This is a 82nd Airborne Division Ranger slash, <laughs> slash, slash, slash. It's going to cut through anything, okay? So, 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 now, this clipper, this is primarily, if, you, if you're a barber and you're doing more men, men's haircuts, I would suggest getting this clipper because it's specially designed to do a lot of work. You know, it's not going to get hot because if you cut with this, you've been cutting with this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had the pink hand before, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, it's going to get hot. So, you need two of these. Uh, this, you won't have to worry about that because with this, it cuts right through it. Now, I alluded to this a second ago. I'm going to just hit this point right now. This close is basically this. And this is a 3-0 guard. This is a one, and all this is, is this open. A lot of these things work in tandem together, and we want to show you how they how they fit together. Okay, next, we got the tools out of the way. The implements, here are the guards that I use. Now you can use a lot of different guards. You got these guards, you got, you got the black guards, you got the gray guards, everybody got a color, you got the good up. So, the secret is this though. The guards should smoothly step up, like steps. If you jump from, okay, here's one, here's two. It's too far of a jump, right? So if this is, if you buy the black guards, you're going to be trapped in a box you can't get out of because if you try to use this and cut a haircut, you're never going to be able to fade the line out. How can you when this is so close and this is so far away? So, You feel that, and you go from this guard. Now, this is a special guard. Yeah, this, they, they don't sell this a lot. Uh, you have to kind of buy this online. But if you don't have that, this is a number two purple guard. Same equivalency. Okay? Now, when I do the class, I give you a list of the guards and how they range, so you won't have to worry about it. And when you go to buy them, you can just say, give me this, 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 and this, and they'll have a red guard is a filler, so it gets me from this, number one, this is my number two, this is my number three, and then I move back up. Okay? So you get what I'm saying. They just need to be in steps, and they need to be to a point where they're not jumping from a, a, a low cutting guard all the way up to something that's cutting a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, we move up four, five, six, set, six, and eight. These are, if you're, if you're cutting straight hair, someone with long hair, tape it on the side. Easily you can do that and it allows you to taper that hair so it tapes, tapers down very smoothly and not just uh, having a huge weight line in the middle. Okay. Combs. Very important because you use these to fade sometimes. Definitely this flat topper comb when you're cutting straight hair. If I could find someone with straight hair, uh, uh, a gentleman, I would love to cut him today too because I want to show you a, a whole other clipper that I have here. It's a vacuum clipper. Okay, now this clipper is great for straight hair. And if you get a hold of this, you never want to put it down. Uh, for some reason, they don't have a lot in, 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 in California. I, when I my uh, shop in North Carolina, it was near an army base. So I actually had these clippers at everybody's station. We gotta have a pick, cause this is what we need right here. Okay. This this pulls the hair, stretches it out, so we can do our nice cut up. What's your name again? Nesto. Nesto. And is that for like any type of hair, or is it like the pick or? is for curly hair? Uh, this primarily is for straight hair. This is for all, just when you're cutting closer phase. And if I was doing a one on the sides, I would do a two in the middle and a three on top. You're stepping up just right, yes. Right. But but remember that the steps on the guard packs are not the same. So you're gonna you're gonna need to fill in the gaps so that you move up chronologically. Of course, every barber needs a razor. We're not gonna use a razor today. Well I am when I do a razor line. But the razor that you guys do is eyebrow arch. I have a client base of eyebrow arching that is huge because for the same reason that gentlemen are going to sit in your chair, 
Ladies love for me to do that. And, and I arch them so that they have an actual arch and they're not rounded in here. Because if you wax, you're going to get rounded right in here. And they like to have that power and bang and, you know, a little arch in there. So I want to cover different stuff while I'm doing this so that you get a gist of what we really go through in the class because it's, it's about uh, targeting your customer, figuring out who is your customer, targeting that, that group of people, marketing to that group of people and with Facebook and Instagram and all the rest of this stuff, it makes it far easier to do so now. And marketing your skills. It's about customer service. Yes, I said customer service. Anybody got any bad customer service lately? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time, right? Yeah. Pretty much that's the norm now, right? Yeah. So if you provide good customer service, you stand out above everybody. You know, the simplest of things that I might do, my clients seem to be amazed at sometimes. I was going, I went out of town, I did a class in North Carolina recently. When I, went, when I left to go out of town, I emailed and texted all my clients and let them know, hey, I'm going to be gone for a week. I'll be back on this day. If you need to get in before, give me a call. If not, I'll see you when I get back. Have a great week. That's simple. But you couldn't do it if you don't have a database of your people, right? If they're not logged into the phone, they're not logged into your computer, uh, if, if you don't have that database, you couldn't have done that. And then guess what happens? They come in and they sit in somebody else's chair. What happened to Lou? Oh, he went out of town. Wow. So they sit in somebody else's chair. And now you now you co op in a customer. When in fact, you could have followed the, the, that simple technique. And now, if you know, Lou's very professional, he took care of us. He made sure that we were, you know, we, we were in the know. That's what you want. You want to be able to service your client to a level that no one else can so that you'll never have to worry about that. And that's what I do. I give you an excellent haircut, but I give you excellent customer service as well so that I don't have to worry about that. My client retention is very high because of that. And that's what I try to put out and that's what I try to uh, build in other barbers and stylists because we need to take this. This is a profession. And honestly, recently, in the last 10, 15 years, People have made it into a hustle. Just real talk. You go into a salon and everybody that got an income tax check or some money they want to clean up, they go get a salon and they just throw people in there and nobody really knows what's happening and everybody's looking around trying to figure out how do I get some clients in here. This happens every day in this business. You're not going to just rent chairs to somebody and think that you're going to make a million dollars. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Let me tell you why. Everybody in this room <laughs> said, someday, one day, I'm not going to work for nobody else. I'm going to hair school. Right? Talk to me. Y'all yeah. didn't say that. Yeah. So, now, if you open up a salon, guess what? You got a whole room of people that said they don't want to work for nobody else. Mm -hmm. Working for you. That's a nightmare. That's a management nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. So, I talk about that. I show you how to work with persnickety people, which we are, we're artists. We're all artists of persnickety, okay? How do you work with them? How do you get them to do what you need them to do while making them think it's their idea to do it? <laughs> That's good management. Getting them to do what you want them to do without, okay, there we go. So, uh, we deal with that. Now, I'm gonna quickly go through the types of haircuts that I do a lot of these days and that are just out right now. Okay, you got a basic haircut. You got basic haircut is the same length all over. So if I was to put this 1A on here and cut him down close and the same length all over, line him up, block the back around the back, that's a basic man's haircut. It can be as long or short as you need it to be. Uh, you have tapers haircuts, tapered haircuts. Now this is what we call a temple taper. Temple taper because it's tapered right here and it's tapered on the neck in the neckline area. Uh, this is a temple taper afro. That's the correct terminology for this. Okay. You have fades. A fade, everybody know where the fade is. Fades come in skin tight. You know, you see the guys with the ball fade around there. Uh, close, but not skin tight, where you still can see a little hair on it. And then you have a shadow fade, which 
this is kind of a businessman cut. I would say a shadow would be in here somewhere so that uh, they could receive a nice line all the way around the haircut. Um, now, determining who your client base is, you want to do that by what kind of work you want to do. Sometimes people, you know, for example, businessmen, they have to get a haircut all the time. So you want somebody like that. You want to pick out, I, I call it, I'm, I'm kind of a sniper. I don't, I don't just go out and randomly throw cards in the air to everybody that I come across. But I give at least five to ten cards out every day. And if you can do that, then you're never going to have an empty chair. You're always going to have some money in your pocket. But I don't just randomly throw them anymore because I know what my client type is. And I go and I pick that person. Sometimes I even go get, you know, back when I was in Atlanta, I... Um, I used to do a guy from Fox 5 News. Everybody sees him every day. He's on the news talking to people. So when they, you know, it wasn't Hollywood, it was Atlanta. So, you know, that, that's a celebrity to everybody else. You know what I mean? So because they see him all the time. So he would come in and get his hair cut. He would always want to get his hair cut. When he was on TV and once somebody saw him in the shop, they were like, oh, that's the guy from. And then so that builds your credibility out there in the world because everybody wants to go to somebody that does celebrity. So, and which... There's, there's a whole nother avenue that you can go into, which I've done a lot of set work as well. You know, you can get out, you, they have different unions, they have, out here you can get on set and you get in one of those and, you know, you're going to be busy all day. And I mean, you get really paid for that. Let me start on my, on my client here and I'm going to continue on from here. Okay. Now, see what he just did? So I'm looking at the phone. I'll take your phone in the chill, okay? Don't do that. Because cause you know what happens? Because he's trying to look at the cell phone. So I had that little talk with them before we start. Because they, sometimes they don't realize how much their head moves when they grab their phone. Okay. So, I'm going to break this hair down, haircut down a couple of ways. I'm going to cut it with two different clippers uh, for the taper part. Just to give you an idea of what it would take with each one. You can, we're going to start basic with the clipper I said everybody needs, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to give him a temple taper, and we're going to, we're just going to lighten him up a little bit here. He's, he, he wasn't cut that long ago, so he's not that far out of, out of pocket yet, okay? So, how we're going to start this haircut is we're going to open this up all the way to one, okay? Now, what this is, the one is going to give you a, the shadow that we talked about earlier. We're going to put in the taper. Now, you don't want to go up too high with this, okay? Here's, here's where you want to live, right in here. This, this is the first line that you're going to put in. And I'm going, to, I'm, going to give, I'm going to do it on both sides. Okay. Okay, I just put in the first line. So what number do you use That's the number one. That's just open. That's all I know what whittling is, like with wood. You do woodwork in no, it? No. No. Like, okay. you're just taking away Sculpting, the, you're, the you're just taking a little bit off at a time. So it's gradually coming off. And we're going to step it down. Okay? So I'm going to take this part right here and I'm going to go open. Now, what happens is open just takes off less hair, closed takes off more hair. That's all. Simple as that. Okay. Now, see how that took a little bit of that weight out of there? Okay, now I'm closing it up. Notice I'm right on the line. Okay. Now, we're going to step down one guard. This is the, this is the number, this is a metal one is what, it, what it, the proper name for this guard. Okay, open first. Always, I like to go open, then close because it takes, it takes it off and then it takes a little bit more off, but it gives you a smoother transition as the haircut progresses. And that's what you want. A, a fade, a temple taper, all of this is, de is designed to be very smooth and to not be a hard transition from one level to the next. See, I took off just a little, closing it up. Right on the line. OK. 
Okay? Now, now, if you're looking at what I'm doing here, notice we went here, we went down one step, and now we're down to the bottom. I teach this, teach this this way because when you know and your guards are set up, you don't have to worry about what to reach for is already ready, and you know what step or stage you're going to be at. Because if you need to take more off, then you know you just need to go down one guard. You don't have to wonder and figure about it. And this is going to build your speed over time because once you have a system of the way to do it, you don't have to keep wondering, or maybe how do I do this, how do I do that? You have a system that's going to give you the same haircut primarily every time. Okay, so open first. Close. Okay. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go in here and take a little bit out of right there. One guard from the red guard that we had. Same technique, open. Then close. Now, I'm back to zero, I mean back to one, and that's gonna take the line up, right there. Now, I'm gonna do the other side. Red guard, open. It's important to know which way the hair grows too. Because, and ask them, because if they're cutting their, if they're combing their hair back, and then you go and try to comb it forward and cut it forward, it's gonna be a mess when you get done. So find out exactly what they're doing so that you don't run into that. This is a this is a, a red number zero, and I'm gonna give you a listing of the of the blades so that you know which one goes where. But you, like I said, you want to make sure that they're in that right succession. And what you're doing is you're looking for a little weight in there, like right in there. Okay, I'm taking I'm loosening that up a little bit. Yes. Okay, zero, this is one, metal, open. Then close. Black one, open first, then close, and we got a little curl right here, so I'm gonna clip her old combs a little curl. taper out the back, I taper out the back, I close it up, and I put in my first line. Closing it, of course, is just moving the blade forward so it gets very close to there. Then I open it up, and this is putting in the line. And you went back to zero, or yep, I went from I went from zero to one, okay? And then Wes is gonna get that out. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna close it all the way up and then I'm gonna open it slightly and then that'll fade that line out. So hmm? when you when you close it, it's zero. When you open it, it's one. You close it up first, you open it up second. Okay. Once you get it, open up, you put in the line. To take that line out, you close it all the way up. 
move it slightly full, okay? Just to give you a little bit, and that will take the line. And that's what happens. When you put a line in, you got to have a way to take it out. So that's why you want your guards in succession, because if you put, a, put it in and you can't get that line out, you're in trouble. You're going to be in trouble, for sure. Okay, start and work from the bottom, and then I'll begin at the top and work my way down and meet. The reason that I do that is so that you don't end up with, let's say, for example, someone's getting a fade. You ever seen somebody with a fade and it's just way up on top of their head up here? That's why, because they kept building and building and building, and they had nowhere else to go, so they ended up here. So we want to keep it a medium fade or a low fade, because that's more uh, customary out here, and that's what people want. Okay, now, saying all that to say, now I'm going to go to two, and I'm going to begin to work my way down so that this taper doesn't end up above the occipital bone. I'm open first, then close, and I'm going to work my way back down these guards, just like we talked about before. Now, sometimes as you're cutting and you're going in this, with this technique, when you look at it, you're like, is that gonna, is that gonna blend all the way out? But that's the beauty of a, of a system because it's always, gonna, it's always gonna yield the same thing. And that's what you want. You don't wanna be guessing. And some people kinda just make it up as they go and they, and they change up and I'm gonna try this today and I'm gonna try this tomorrow. That's fine, but it's not about doing one haircut a day. It's about doing 20 haircuts a day or more if you can because, you know, simple math. You want, you want more money. So you want to have something that is consistent and always yields the same thing. So I'm still following the same technique. I'm working my way down the guards, open, close, open, close. The other reason I, I have to, I can't call it that, is because they, when they're calling it that, they're going off of one pack of guards. Right. I was and, and with that one pack of guards, that's why I had to alter it the way I teach it because you can't get, you can't get this if you don't have these two guards to fill in the gaps. So this way, you'll get the system so that you'll have that built into it from the beginning and not go back sometimes you know you want you want to get it from the beginning the way you want to do it because it's harder to go back and relearn something sometimes you know as an owner I, I would much rather get students than stylists sometimes or barbers because you got bad habits so I see the, the movement of your hands pretty um, steady but really smooth same time, right? Yes, definitely. And, and what you want to do is you want to just place the guard on the skin so that well, you don't want to poke them because it's just a little sharp sometimes. So you just want to follow the motion of how the head goes. And sometimes like where I'm at back here, you have to get him to tilt a little forward, but he's okay. And you want to get that smooth motion.
Now, we got the temple taper in. It's an afro. It's supposed to be round. Okay, sometimes you see that Steve Harvey look where it's boxed up here but round on the corners or whatever. It's supposed to be round. Your barber did a good job of telling my, my, my best over there. Uh, now, what we're going to do is going to round it back up. You want to you basically, not quite a 45 on the side because he doesn't have that much hair, but you want it to come up and you want it to be round just like this. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way around and just make sure that I get the base right and give it a, and give it that angle so it still comes out for me. Okay? All right. What I am doing is I have to freehand in the side. I love to freehand because when you're freehanding, everybody can't do that. And you gotta have you gotta have one of these. Okay. Okay. Now, now where I, what I'm doing is I'm simply taking off the, the fine ends of the hair, and I am doing it on an angle so as to allow the haircut to fan out a little bit because it's supposed to be not quite a 45. He doesn't have that much hair, but it's going to blend outward. Okay. So can't really see that, but if you look down through there, you can see, right? Right there. Okay. I'm going to slowly working my way up. Now, do you see how the frizzes are gone off the back right there? Yeah. That looks good, right? Yeah. That makes a huge difference in the haircut. Now, if I were to try to cut that with this, it's, it, it's going to do it. But it's not going to do it the same way. We're gaudy back here. <laughs> okay. Now. See how the sides are. Now, let's work on this top. When I'm doing this, when I'm freehanding, we're talking about freehanding. With this, you see that? You see the circle in this haircut right here? Mm -hmm. You see the frizzies, but you see the circle in there, right? Now, this clipper kind of becomes a part of my arm when I'm doing it. I'm kind of like one of those robots at the car place or something when I do this thing. But I look through the haircut, I slightly tilt this blade, and now, trust me, Got to be steady hand because this thing will cut anything get in front of you if you put your hand in. Okay, so it doesn't play. You will be leaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now. It's kind of like cutting grass. Okay, I had a grass route when I was a kid. I used to, you know, I'm going to hustle. <laughs> You're talking about the balding ones, right? The, the, the okay. Um, as, like I said, it's kind of like cutting grass because I'm just cutting one lane at a time. Now, let me let you guys see where we're doing. Now, look at that compared to that. Clean, right? And all you want is the ends, and you want to follow your path. Now, if you notice, my hand goes in one motion. One. That's why I say it's kind of like that, that arm of that thing, because it's consistently going to follow that. I don't do a lot of herky-jerky. That right there will make you have a bunch of dips and all that kind of stuff in there. One smooth motion help you around that. Now we did the front part. Now I'm going to focus right here on the back area. Now there's a couple of ways I could do this. I'm going to do I'm going to do this one first, and then I'm going to do the other side a different way, just to give you an example. Continuing my pattern already, starting at the end of the pattern. 
The most important thing about an afro is being able to see the circle. Now, this side, I'm going to stand behind the patron and I am going to bring it, bring the clipper towards me and just follow it this way. It gives me the ability to still continue that motion. Now, there's different ways that you can do it because I could go that way or I could come like that, but for now we're just going to follow the pattern that we're already building. Some of this depends on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, so I will give you a different technique if you were left lefty. Same cut, slightly different technique. Now, you can go, I, I would like for you all, if you would, also to check us out online at Hair Masters uh, Seminar Series, and there's a questionnaire tab. Go it is very quick. Won't take but thirty seconds. Uh, that way, I, when I, as I as we do other classes because we got weave classes, we got color classes. We have there's a whole litany of different uh, classes that we're going to have. Following my technique, following my pattern. Boom. Now, everybody has something good and something bad with their hair. Because some people have more good, some people have more bad, you know. But as a stylist, as a barber, that's your job, is to figure out what the good is. And you want to play up the good and play down the bad. She done, she going to. What I'm looking for now is a little piece. See this little patch right here? <laughs> now, there's no such thing as a perfect haircut, although you get it close to it. No, just like there's no perfect head of hair, although some have more than others. So when you get done doing your haircut, you always should go back and do a once or twice over to check and see if this is right, that's right, because this person is going to represent you when they leave the shop, so you want them looking good. As your boy Vidal Sassoon used to say, you don't look good, I don't look good, so mm -hmm. I want you to look good. See his barber, he did a good job, but he's gonna be a little mad when he's seeing it because he was in my chair. And we kind of like Eric Badu say, I'm sensitive about my stuff now. You don't just be sitting in it by the chair because you come back to my chair and you didn't, you didn't tow your hairline up and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna talk to y'all. Okay, let's survey the work. Okay, mm hmm, mm hmm. I see a little bit here. Notice the difference that the, the frizzies being gone makes with this haircut. I mean, it makes it so much cleaner when you got that. Now, let's get it lined up. Okay, I generally start in the back with the lineup. Now, one thing you want to watch out for is, look, the V neck, uh, you know, where it just, shoo, and you know, it's like 80-ish, you know what I mean? You don't really want to go back there. Sometimes people, not just stylists, but barbers, for some odd reason, they just go way over here, okay? Keep it wide. Follow the natural hairline as much as you possibly can. 
Mm -hmm. These are T outliners by Andes. Okay, now when you go around the ear, I generally just take my comb, pull it down, be careful. These are men, sometimes stuff behind that ear you don't want to run up on. Y'all ever pull somebody's ear down and... Yeah. Yes, y'all. Mm -hmm. You Clean. Start cutting me in there, you'll figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so. Now, let me show you something here. Okay, right here, that's the hairline, basically it, it went to here instead. So, he cut a little bit out of that piece right there. We're gonna go back, and it's not far off, so I'm gonna just follow what he what he did, okay? But sometimes people will take it way off, and, and it it looks bad when it grows back. So you don't want to take someone's hairline back, because some people do it so they come back to the barbershop quicker. I guess I don't know, what it is. but it's not a good thing to do that because the client is not gonna like it once they start seeing it come back. Now, in this area, it's, it's, it's to be rounded, okay? So, some people get there different ways. I generally just make a pattern here, make a pattern here, and then I work this corner and make that, and round it out. Do you grow this down or are you gonna you like do ice picks or no, cut it off? I just go with the chin strap. Chin strap. Okay. okay. Now right here same type of thing with this there's a little bit back but I'm not going to I'm not going to take it back I'm, I'm going to raise a line too just to make sure that it stands out Always think about it from a customer service point of view. Because this is definitely a customer service business. But hair can take you all kinds of places now. I was, I, I mentioned earlier about, I, I went into, I was in video production for a while. Well, I still do that. It's hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hairline, okay. He's, he's pretty good, but if it's just slightly a little raised on this side, okay? Now, I'm not going to raise it on the, on the other side to match that. You can choose to do that if you like, but it's close enough that it won't. You, we can make it where it won't be an issue whatsoever, okay? So, now, I do this a couple of ways. One, sometimes I'll start on this side, and I'll make my, I'll make my initial cut in the corner. You know, I use my chair, so don't pay me any mind going around it. Always use your chair, because if you're going to keep doing this, trust me, you don't want to be going around that chair, because it will wear you out. The next thing you know, you, your feet are hurting and you'll be burnt out. Okay, now 
The one thing that a cosmetologist or barber always needs is that mirror because the mirror will not lie to you. Sometimes your, your eyes will. So you want that mirror so that you can check all your work in it and make and just check yourself, you know. Like I said, nobody's perfect, but you want to be as it's going to be as good as you possibly can and deliver a haircut the best that you can. That if you see something, let's say for example, an issue with the hairline or whatever, whatever, talk to them first before you start cutting on it so you don't get blamed for it too now, okay? Now you see right here, this is how this will give you an example. Well, sir, if you notice right here, that's how you start off. See how it's little, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna do, that's how you wanna do it. Then that way they know that you are their savior and you wanna. You know, and when they walk out, they're gonna be singing your name. You know. Yeah, it just cleans it up a little. So, I'm not going to do the full, but I just want to give you an example of that. Now, when you're dealing with guys and, these, and the beards, minus the razor, all you have to do is cut the hair down with your clippers and then come behind it with this. And this will clean it up. Very good. Very good. Okay. What's the name of that? This is a Temple Taper Afro. Oh, this, this is called a five star uh, shaver. Does it have two things? Yes. Cylinders? Okay. This one is particularly for uh, it's, it's particularly for men of color because it, it won't bump 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 your pseudo folliculitis. <laughs> Give it a class, I'm gonna tell you the real name. Not really. <laughs> Again, going back to making money with this, okay? The razor bump. You see them all the time. There are, you got tin skin, you got, uh, uh, you got about five different products that will take care of that. Uh, and they still sell mm, Well, Magic Shave is, a, is different. Uh, but the, the tin skin and skin tight is, is specifically uh, to take away the razor bumps. Now, all you need to do is you call it a treatment. Take them in, get a hot towel, put the hot towel on the face, open up the pores, put the skin tight or whatever whatever product you're going to be using for it. Let it put it on there while it's after you after you heat the face. Okay, treatment, and it works. So it'll be off in a short period of time. Then you turn around and sell them. Bam, got it for you right here, sir. Make that money right then. Keep it moving. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs>
at all. You'll be ready. You'll be a tiger ready to jump on top. <laughs> Round. <laughs> okay. Any How questions? Much? Give me some How questions. Much? Uh, the class is $100. If it's three students from here that want to go, if it's at least three people, you can get it for $75. Wow. And, the, and this is the one-day one that you're talking about. Yes, this about. is the one day. What's the two-day one? The two-day is four fifty, And that, uh, that one is not available just yet because uh, generally what happens is these two classes, people fill that class up from these two classes. And it's, it's a lot of hairstyles in there that you know already licensed and, and some instructors that come to that. So um, that'll be in, I won't do that until the first of the year. But this class right here, to get you from zero to 65 miles an hour, you're good.